church. Come on, honey. Joe, I'm not finished with breakfast yet. I'll be there in a minute. No, really, we're going to be late for church. I, I'll be there in a minute. Oh. oh, my goodness. I didn't realize you were here. Hi. Uh, my name is Lee Nish. I'm pastor at Sparks United Methodist Church. I'm really planning on uh, leading in worship today. I just haven't finished my breakfast yet. As you can see, I'm still eating. Um, you, you know, eating is such an important part of what I do. If, if I count correctly, breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week, I eat 21, days, uh, 21 times over the course of a week. And I'm just trying to grab a little breakfast. But you know, oftentimes I eat alone. And eating can be a, an excellent way to spend time to get to know your neighbor, to love your neighbor, to change the world. That's what we're going to talk about today as we continue our BLESS series, B-L-E-S-S, -S, Begin With Prayer, Listen, Eat, Serve, and Share Your Story. Why not you join me at the table and we'll continue to worship and also grab something and join me and we'll eat together. My name is Rodney Porter, and I'll be reading scripture today. The first scripture comes from Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 through 13, in which Jesus dines at Matthew's house and teaches the holier-than-thou Pharisees that God wants us to be merciful, not religious. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And the second reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 34 to 35, in which Jesus quotes a reproach said about his way of living. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by all her children. Mm. I hope you've uh, grabbed something to eat so you can enjoy a meal with me while I'm enjoying mine. All too often, my, my meals are pretty rushed. In fact, as you can see, this meal is rushed. I take anything I can grab, and today it's instant Quaker Oats. All I do is pour this in a bowl. I add boiling water, and there I am. I eat my meal. I'm done in, in less than five minutes. But I missed an opportunity. I missed an opportunity to get to know somebody like you better by inviting them to sit down and enjoy a meal with me, which I'm really doing right now. Uh, 
You know, it's too bad, but in our culture, we've almost made it uh, a necessity to engage in fast food, whether it's instant oatmeal or going through the drive through at our favorite fast food place and grabbing something in a bag, eating it on the way to wherever we're going. And before we know it, we're eating by ourselves so frequently that we miss the opportunity to eat with someone else. We miss the opportunity to eat with our family members, uh, our wives, our husbands, our children. But more, most importantly, we miss the opportunity to eat with someone in order to get to know them better. And remember, listening plus spending time getting to know them better is a way we love. You know, I remember uh, many years ago when I had first moved to California, I was asked to speak at a local Kiwanis club. Uh, it was a breakfast meeting. I spoke there and had a good time. I think I was well received. And they invited me to consider joining the club. Well, I had never belonged to a, a service club and I took that um, invitation kindly, but I decided in my own mind I wasn't going to do that. Um, I wasn't really interested in getting up and going somewhere and being there at, on a Friday morning at seven o'clock. So it was just maybe a week or two later when I hadn't shown up on a Friday morning. One of the men from the club, guy's name was Marv Scarper. Marv gave me a call and he said, you know, my wife and I would like to invite you over for dinner this weekend. Would, wouldn't you join us? Well, at the time I was a bachelor and I thought, hmm, free meal, that sounds like a good deal. And so I said, sure, Marv, you tell me where you live and what time and I'll show up. Well, in fact, he did. And it was such a kind and genu genu genuine act of hospitality. I had a great evening there, not only because of the meal that uh, was prepared and shared with me, but also for the conversation that we had. And you know, I think Marv was a very wise man because he knew that after having sharing a meal with me, I'd be a member of that club. I joined the club and I've been a member ever since. Even over the miles, I still travel to the Bay Area on uh, Good Friday mornings to have to share breakfast with that group of people. That's the power that a meal can have because it is an expression of love. It's getting to know someone better and sharing time with them. I remember when Joe and I moved to Gilroy, our first solo appointment, and Joe was pregnant with Andrew. It was summer. We arrived there July 1st. It was a hot summer. And uh, I had this really screwball idea to get to know people. I decided we're going to invite members of the congregation over on Sunday evenings throughout the summer so that we can share a meal with them. Well, we did that and my poor wife got stuck with making meals every Sunday evening for a different set of people in that congregation. Pregnant, hot, and in the kitchen. Not a great combination. But anyway, uh, we did that and we, there were so many stories that came out of the conversations we had and the experiences we had with the folks at Gilroy. Do you realize that I served that congregation for 11 years? And a lot of the foundational relationships that were made that allowed me to stay as their pastor so long were made because we shared initially those meals together. One more story I just feel like I need to tell you. There was a couple who were not able to schedule a, a Sunday evening to join us and uh, they lived in Morgan Hill about 10 or 11 miles to the north of Gilroy. They invited me to come and join them for dinner uh, later in the fall. And so the evening came, I drove up to uh, Morgan Hill. I went and sat down in the living room and had a few moments uh, with them before going on into the dining room. And they were wondering how I enjoyed my summer having meals with everyone. Well, I explained to them that my wife was using a, a cookbook saying 99 ways to prepare chicken. And 365 I, ways. 365 ways to prepare chicken. And I think she made it through most of those ways. And I said, you know, we had marvelous conversations. I feel like I got to know the congregation members so well. But he said, 
Believe me, I am so tired with, of chicken. I am done with chicken. Well, at that point, with a bit of an embarrassed smile on their faces, they invited me into the dining room. When I saw the dining room table, there was a big platter of chicken waiting for us. Well, can I tell you that uh, we became lifelong friends at that moment. Eating was very much on Jesus' agenda. Uh, we see so many times in the Gospel accounts that Jesus is sitting down with people and, and in order to enlarge the table, Jesus would sit down with people who he didn't know and in fact other people would have difficulty believing that he would actually be eating with some of the people he chose to eat with. Let me just share with you uh, some, of, uh, uh, some of the ways in which Jesus didn't <laughs> please anybody by breaking the rules to make his table bigger. Notice how his contemporaries accused Jesus. One side criticized him for eating with tax collectors and sinners. The other side judged him for eating too much or dining with the Pharisees and lawyers. Jesus ate with all sides. He ate with leopards. He received a woman with a poor reputation at a men's dinner. And he even invited himself to a sinner's house. How do we not see that? Jesus got himself into trouble because he ate so much with people who he didn't know that well. You know, for those of us who are in the church, sometimes we're accused of only eating with our friends in the church or at the church. You know, for those of us who are United Methodist, uh, we joke because our emblem is the cross and the flame, but in reality, our emblem should be the casserole. We have so many uh, opportunities for potlucks, at least we did before the pandemic. But we tend to have the habit of eating with each other instead of eating with others for whom we would like to develop a relationship and if we had to bless them and to share, to get to know them better and eventually as a display of loving our neighbor. I'd like to challenge you this week as we continue our blessed series to not only begin with prayer, praying for those for whom you want to get to know better, and not only listening to people who are talking with you or in which you engage a relationship, but I want to challenge you to invite somebody out to dinner or lunch or breakfast or coffee. It really doesn't matter as long as you make sure you pay for their cost. But invite someone to join you. You know, as, as I mentioned before, uh, if we eat three meals a day, we have 21 opportunities during the week to share a meal with somebody. Don't you think we could find just one of those meals to share with someone with whom we would like to have a conversation, we'd like to get to know better, we'd like to hear their stories, and we'd like to, in that way, bless them and love them. That's really the central piece of the BLESS process. As God has blessed us to be a blessing for others, this is God's strategy for changing the world, one person at a time. And so instead of throwing a big banquet and eating with a lot of people, show somebody that they're special enough to invite them to have coffee with you, or if they have a sweet tooth, dessert with you, uh, or share a meal with you, whatever seems to be appropriate. And make a plan to do it this week. Not only will you be blessing somebody else, I guarantee you, God will bless you in the process. Now, let's hear from one of our members as she shares how important sharing a meal is with somebody else. Hello, my name is Amanda Penn and I'm gonna to talk to you about the power of the paper plate. My story begins uh, with a call from my husband who was working on a big project in Los Angeles. And he called to tell me that he would not be home in Las Vegas for Mother's Day weekend because he just couldn't get away. I was hurt, I was angry, and I thought, if I sit around here all weekend, I'm just gonna, you know, pout. 
So I need to do something fun. So I thought, I know, I'll take the kids to Zion National Park for an overnight trip, go camping. So the next day we loaded up the car, put our suitcases and our sleeping bags and food in the back of the expedition and we took off. And on the drive up there, I started envisioning this idyllic setting with the car parked under the trees and the kids scampering along the creek and God's majestic geology as the backdrop. It was gonna be a Hallmark movie. Well, who knew that half of Las Vegas was gonna take mama to a national park and let her cook over a fire in the wilderness. As we got closer to Zion, there were no vacancy signs everywhere. Mercifully, there was one campground available. The operative word is ground, because when I came around to the lot, it was nothing but a huge piece of dirt. And it was segmented by a parking space for the car, a spigot coming up out of the dirt, a ring of rocks that was supposed to be a fire pit, and then a splintery picnic table. Goodbye, kids scampering by the creek. Goodbye, Hallmark movie. To make matters worse, at the adjacent table sat a woman, a young woman, and she was staring and grinning at us the whole entire time we unpacked the vehicle. And I thought, great, cherry, cherry on top of my cake. We're camped next to some weirdo. Well, the kids and I went hiking, and we had a great time. We came back. We were happy. We were... We were putting the food out on the table for supper, and I noticed that there was a young man sitting next to the young woman, and we struck up a conversation. It turns out their names were Vim and Yuta, and they were from Holland, and they spoke perfect English. Well, since they didn't have any food on their table, I invited them to come over and have dinner with us. And the children had such a great time showing them how to cook their weenies on a skewer over the fire, and we sat down to some canned chili and hot dogs and some blue Gatorade. <laughs> well, after I put the children to bed, them and Yudit invited me to come over to their campfire and have a beer and just visit. So I went over there and we sat and talked and laughed for hours. We had a great time. We talked about everything, politics. We talked about um, <laughs> cultural differences. We just talked about life, and we really bonded. Well, the next morning, we were packing up our campsites, and Vim came over, and he took one of the paper plates, and on it, he wrote their, all their contact information so we could stay in touch. Well, fast forward years later, they marry. They have two boys. They come to visit us and vacation in the States several times. We go on vacation with them in Europe several times. And Judith and I still um, chat on Zoom frequently. We share our lives and our hearts and what's going on. And we're like family. So I kept Vim's paper plate as a, as a keepsake uh, to remind me that out of disappointment can come the greatest blessing. So when you see a paper plate, let it remind you that sitting down to dinner with strangers can enhance and change your life in the most amazing way. Thank you.
about you, but that sermon got me a little bit hungry. Hungry to get to know others and to share a meal together. Will you pray with me? God of love, you created humankind and all of creation to be in companionship and to be in harmony. And yet, with our own free will, we sometimes turn against that, not with intention, but just because. Help us in this coming week to find ways to be intentional relationship with others, to have a meal with someone that we've maybe never had a meal before. We cannot build relationship without first being a little vulnerable and sharing ourselves. Help us to do that, Lord. Even now as we are vulnerable and share with you our own joys and concerns that are with us today in this moment. Lord, we know you walk beside us. Help us to grow into that love so that others know too what it feels like to have your love and your protection and your comfort in their hearts also. May we be your light. And may we live as Jesus taught us. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May God be with you in the coming week. Mm. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your meal as much as I've enjoyed mine, but I hope in a way that you would consider this to be a holy meal, a time that God truly uses a meal to bless you and to bless me. Very frequently we start a meal by blessing the food, but God has already blessed the food. The food is just the excuse for us to get together, to get to know each other better, to share a meal, to share a blessing, to share our stories, and to demonstrate a tangible way that we love one another. I hope you'll take on that challenge to invite somebody to share a cup of coffee or a meal with you sometime this week. You will be blessed and you will continue to be part of God's strategy to change the world, one person at a time. As you go forth, plan on who that person is going to be. Pray for that person. Be prepared to listen to that person and enjoy a meal with that person. Thanks for joining us. Go change the world. Bless our friends, bless our food. Come, O oh Lord, and sit with us. May our hearts flow with peace. Come with your love and surround us. Friendship and love, may they bloom and grow. Bloom and grow forever.
Blumenbrock, Blumenbrock.